allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would remind you to silence your cell phones. The meeting documents are on the end of the counter next to Commissioner Kelly, and Robert is available with listening devices if need be. Um, we'll start with routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. I have a motion to approve the agenda, Commissioner Benega. I would like to amend the agenda to, uh, are we gonna defer item 11? Just remove it. Remove. Just remove it. Remove item 11 uh, to a future date. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda with the removal of item number 11. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Now a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Now a motion to approve the amend agenda as amended. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is to approve the County Commission minutes of April 29th, 2014. So moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve the minutes from April 29th. Are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And item B is consider a motion to correct the commission minutes from March 11th, 2014. On that date, the commission approved the purchase of two pickup trucks for the highway department off of the state of South Dakota contract awarded to Lamb Motors. However, the purchase is being made from Sioux Falls Ford, who has agreed to supply those vehicles at the state contract price in accordance with SDCL 5-18C-8. The correction in the minutes is to state that the purchase of the trucks will be made from Sioux Falls Ford. Looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Those corrections. I have a motion and a second to correct the commission meetings from March 11th. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item three are bills to be paid in the amount of $339,493.25. Pay the bills with the comment. Motion to pay the bills. Second. I have a motion and a second to pay the bills. The commission, uh, comment from Commissioner Berth. Uh, my comment today is uh, one individual uh, for a psych evaluation costs us $10,200. Do you have an issue with those psych evals? Are there any other comments? I have a motion and a second to approve the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item four reports. A, the Interlakes Community Action Partnership. 2013 audited financial statements have been received and they are placed on file in the auditor's office. And B, there is a presentation of the 2013 annual report for the Minnehaha County Office of the Public Defender. Tracy Smith. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning. You had in your packets um, a report from the Public Defender's Office. Um, I'm wondering if there's any questions for Tracy concerning her report. She has added something to the report that I don't think was in there in the past, and that was um, non-billable hours, and put it in a graph for it, which made it much easier to see. I don't know if you had any questions about that. Any questions for Tracy? Commissioner I would just like to make a comment. Tracy, I uh, appreciate your extra work in, in to Mike Miller for uh, putting this together and for all the additional information that we've requested over the last year. Uh, that with uh, reorgani reorganizing your department and doing some long-range planning, strategic planning is frankly a really positive thing that you have uh, led us through as a county commission uh, department and I appreciate your extra work and your extra uh, involvement in getting that done and certainly want to thank you and Mike for th those additional efforts. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to work with Margaret Sumption. She's been really beneficial to our department this year. Awesome. Are there any other comments or questions on the Public Defender's Report? Commissioner Barth? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, 
looking at the increase that happened between 2011 and 2012 and the cases open, do you have any, any reason to understand what caused that great increase? From 2011 to 2012? Yeah. I really, I really don't. I think the number of cases, it fluctuates from year to year. Um, it just depends on the changes in the cycle. Um, it's hard to say. It's a conglomeration of many things from um, we're dependent upon the number of arrests in the community. Um, a lot of it can depend on the Sioux Falls Police Department being added new positions. You know, and one thing that Mike and I were talking about that was different was the 100 days of heat um, can make a significant difference in our caseloads. Um, we saw a big increase in cases during that period of time. It was a busy summer when we had that going on. I had not considered weather. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Tracy? Okay. And I think that report is on file if anyone would like to review it. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Item number five is personnel actions. A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Jen Otix of Human Resources. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about those routine actions. Move the routine actions. Second. A motion is second for routine actions. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is to recognize significant employee anniversaries for May 2014. The county had a few significant anniversaries during the month of May. Um, Kristen Trana, who is the administrative coordinator at the sheriff's office, has five years of service. With ten years of service, we have Michael Miller, um, who is the chief deputy public defender, also with, was with left. us this morning. He must have left. Um, and then also ten years of service, Michael Brendan, who is a certified civil process server with the sheriff's office. And then fifteen years of service with the county, Tracy Smith, who is the public defender, also was here this morning. And Randy Sample, who's a senior trial attorney with our state attorney's office. Okay. Thank you. Item D is, oh, C is to recognize volunteers and county government for April 2014. During the month of April, we had over 200 volunteers that gave their time and service to a number of different departments within the county. The Siouxland Heritage Museums, the Public Defender's Office, the Sheriff's Office, Emergency Management Department, and the Jail. We just want to thank them for volunteering their time and efforts and helping helping us here at the county. I don't know. I'll talk to you afterwards. Right. And item D is approval of the 2014 Affirmative Action Plan. Last week I presented you with the information from the 2014 Affirmative Action Plan and along with a, a link to the, the full plan for your review. Today I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Otherwise, I have the signature page with Cindy Jepson to um, sign off on final approval of the plan if that is what you do. Um, beyond that, we'll ask for approval um, or signatures from all the elected department heads as well. And then, as I mentioned last week, we'll have some changes for our 2015 Affirmative Action Plan. As we track all the data for the women and minorities, uh, we will also need to track that kind of data for veterans and individuals with disabilities. So um, later this year, we will undertake the project of um, implementing that into our application system so that we can gather that information from not only our applicants, but also post hire and our employees. So additionally, we'll need to survey all of our employees to gather that information as well so that we're ready to go for our January 1st, 2015 date. And with that, I would just ask for approval of the plan. Okay, Commissioner Benega. Jen, yes. uh, last week when you were here, you briefly talked about uh, the guard individuals and not being able to use those statistics as veterans. Is that typical? Uh, the report that we have to file only lets us report on um, veterans in certain areas, certain types of veterans. So that's all we can include in our report, but um, Carrie and I have been talking about this and we feel that it would be beneficial to us to gather more information from our employees so that we have a better hold on how many veterans truly do we have, also how many active military, how many reservists, and how many guards. Because I think there's a lot, um, a lot of employees, particularly in our sheriff's office, and I'd, I'd like to be able to report on that. I think that shows that our, our support of military um, as well, as, current military as well as veterans. Well, I've over the years, I've noticed the number of people that have been deployed, and it seems to me that they need to be recognized somehow in those statistics, otherwise it doesn't and I think seem that accurate to me. I, I would agree, and I think that we can 
identify them. Perhaps it's not included in the formal report, but certainly it's worth worth mentioning and including in, in some sort of way. Okay, thank you. I agree. Are there any questions or additional questions for Jen about the affirmative, affirmative action plan? I look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the plan as amended or suggested. Second. A motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. There are no applications for abatement today. The next item is notice and requests. Item A, a notice from the South Dakota Department of Health of <coughs> disinternment reinterment permit issued for the remains of Christopher Rippentrop. Item B is to authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of hearing for the 2014-2015 malt beverage license renewal applications. And normally we don't have to have a public hearing for the renewal of the applications unless establishments have had a violation within the past um, calendar year. And this year there have been four establishments that have had violations so they'll have to be coming forward before the commission with a public hearing so I want authorization to publish that notice so I'm looking for an authorization to publish so a second I have a motion and a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed same sign motion passes unanimously Item 8 is planning and zoning notices. Item A is the first reading and authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of hearing to consider 14-04 to rezone from A1 Agricultural District to C Commercial District, the east 120 feet of Track 2 of Wold's Tracks, except H-1, in the northwest quarter, northwest quarter of Section 27, Township 103 North, Range 49 West, located at the corner of South Dakota Highway 115, and County Highway 122, Scott Anderson. Thank you. Good morning, Scott. Uh, Scott Anderson from County Planning. Uh, today I'm bringing before you a rezoning <coughs> request, 14-4. This is to rezone a little less than a half an acre from A1 Agriculture to C Commercial District. Uh, this is more commonly known or located at Midway Corner. I think most of us know where that's at, between uh, Sioux Falls and Baltic. This did go to the Planning Commission last Monday and it received a unanimous recommendation for approval. Today I'm asking you to uh, authorize a, a motion to authorize the auditor to publish a hearing notice. The hearing would be on uh, May 27th and uh, at that time we would have uh, an opportunity for public input, um, any kind of public testimony and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Scott? This is a, to authorize the publishing of the hearing on May 27th. Move to authorize. Second. A motion and a second to authorize. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is the first reading and authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of hearing to vacate a portion of Rudolph Avenue beginning at the southeast edge of Ashton Street and extending south to its end at the east edge of Melissa Street at the regular county commission meeting on June 3rd, 2014. Scott Anderson. Thank you once again, Scott Anderson from the planning department. Uh, today we have a request to uh, vacate a portion of Rudolph Avenue, <clears throat> uh, actually primarily the majority of Rudolph Avenue. Uh, this came from the property owner that is located right here. Um, and uh, the property owner is JTRT Properties. This is the location of the Hyman Trucking. Uh, they make fire apparatus and so on. Uh, currently, there is no Rudolph Street. It ends at the end of Ashton. The applicant uh, would like to vacate this road so they can allow for some future development here in the very near future. Uh, I'm asking that you authorize the publisher or the auditor to publish a hearing notice for a hearing to vacate this portion of Rudolph Avenue on May, June 3rd. Any questions for Scott? I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. I have one question, Scott. Is it is it all the way from Ashton, all the way to Melissa? They, and there is no road there. It's there, just there is no road. So what we would do is um, I've been working with um, Steve Van Buskirk and the the applicant, the property owner. What we'll do is vacate that a uh, portion of Rudolph Avenue. They will install a cul-de-sac at the end of Ashton S Street, mm -hmm. which will allow fire apparatus and. Uh, emergency vehicles to be able to turn around if they need to. And then at a future time, um, they are looking at redeveloping uh, or submitting a 
new development proposal request for this area that is undeveloped right now. Okay. So. And there won't be an issue with access because you can come down on that Cottonwood Avenue, yeah. which there's no street there either it at ends, this point. It, it ends there. So that, that area basically south of Ashton Street is, uh, is going to be potentially developed someday, but the, the way that the lot configuration was or the way that the road configuration was, it sort of pinches out um, JTRT properties and they would like to, they need expansion and, and the, as fire trucks and whatnot get bigger, they need a, a wider area to be able to pull these trucks in and out to work on. So the building is gonna be a little bit wider and uh, which facilitates the need for the vacation of, of Rudolph Avenue. So I have a motion and a second for the auditor to publish notice of the hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. There are no petition for compromise of lien today. The next item is an opportunity for public comment. This is the time when the public can speak about anything that's not on the agenda for today. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Seeing none, we will move on with regular business. Item number 10 is a public hearing to consider a drainage permit application number 14-13 from Tom Opitz to conduct agricultural drainage on track one, Caleb subdivision, northwest quarter, section 19, township 101 north, range 51 west, Wall Lake Township, Scott Anderson. Thank you. This is a uh, request that was brought forth by uh, the applicant, Mr. Opitz, Mr. Tom Opitz, and uh, the uh, applicant uh, has attempted to obtain the downstream property owner's uh, acknowledgement and signature on the drainage permit, was unable to, and uh, would like to proceed on with the potential drainage work, and so has requested a hearing before the drainage board, which is the county commission. Uh, I, will, I have a slide presentation that I will show you. Uh, I did send out notices to the uh, of today's hearing on April 9th to all the downstream property owners for at least a half a mile at the outlet of the proposed drainage project. This involved one downstream property owner. So <clears throat> basically the property that Mr. Opitz owns is shown where the area in red, um, which is outlined basically in this area here. This was the downstream uh, property owner, and the outlet of the, drain of the drainage project tile will be right here. And you can see uh, how the, the drainage, and if you, you sort of can see where the wet areas are as we go through this, and I have slides. Uh, I met with Mr. Opitz on, uh, I believe it was April 11th, and we drove through uh, his fields, and he showed me, he was gracious enough to show me the areas that were wet. Uh, I did notice that there are very well-defined waterways. There was also evidence of where you could see wet areas, and that was evident by the salt buildup on the, on the soil. So there, there was obvious wet areas. There was also obvious drainage areas, and I'll go through those pictures for you. <coughs> Excuse me, this is looking basically straight south, uh, near, the, near Highway 42 and you can start to see the drainage area right through here. Where's what? Highway 42 on that front map? Uh, Highway 42 would be... On that first map? Uh, up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the applicant lives right here. So um, this is his property across the across, uh, State Highway 42, which is right here. Oops. So Scott, does everything drain to the... East. It all it all drains to the east, and eventually this works it way, works its way towards Wall Lake. So here's another. Uh, you can see the uh, the grassy area and wet area as as it moves to the uh, against. I believe this was sort of to the uh, east. You can so see where the wet area was down in here. So there's a, a low area, and this drains that way. Here, I took this picture because this is a wet area, but if you look closely, you can sort of see this white dis discoloration here in this area. That is evidence of the, the wet 
soil that's there, and then as it evaporates, the leaves behind this, the minerals and, and salt deposits. This is, uh, this is the culvert that goes across the road. Eventually that uh, all goes to the east. There's a well-defined channel. This shows there's actually two culverts. You can see one was a uh, corrugated pipe, and you can see the back of my vehicle. Then there was another pipe about mm, 50 feet, 35 feet uh, to the north, and that was a cement culvert. Here you can see where, that, um, where the wet area is in this grassy area. And this is, this is close to, I'm standing about where the outlet would be for the, uh, for the um, tile project. This is still on the applicant's lo uh, property. The neighboring property basically is over here on the fence line. And you can see this is looking basically due east and there's a, quite a well-defined channel there or ditch. And once again, this is, the, this is looking back to the west. You can see that that ditch area that goes all the way back towards the west. This is looking from the outlet, looking back to the north. Uh, you, you sort of can see this undulates in this area and, and that's why they'll, they'll be going through um, sort of these low areas as it undulates. Once again, this is standing near the outlet. It's looking back up this way where they'll be doing some tiling. And once again, this is oops. This is stand. This is close to the uh, where the uh, outlet would be, and looking back up towards the towards the hill. These are all looking at the applicant's property, yes. correct? And this the applicant lives over here, and this and this would be Highway 42. You can see sort of see how this all how this all sort of drains, and there's some lower areas there. And then this is where it uh, it goes onto the neighbor's property, I believe. And then that was it. But I'll go back to the uh, uh, main photo, which shows the proposed drainage tiles. There's approximately 8,000 feet of tile, and uh, I believe he said it was going to be. Uh, let me look here. Well, it would vary. Uh, it, it's going to be a five-inch, I believe, tile, and there'll be like 10 runs. They'll all sort of connect into what is this well-defined drainage area. This then <coughs> drains. There, there's like a, a nice channel there. This continues to drain. You can see right here is a stock pond. I had parked my vehicle right here to show that there's those two culverts that cross uh, the road right here. And, and then that... See here. That's on 461st Avenue, and then it continues on. There's a, a fairly well-defined channel. It continues on towards Wall Lake and into that Wall Lake drainage basin. So, I'd be glad. Uh, our recommendation is that uh, my my findings is that the proposed tile lines will be, be will be placed in traditionally wet areas on this property, and areas that function all within the same watershed. And staff is recommending approval of. Uh, recommending that the drainage board approve drainage permit 14-13. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, otherwise, I believe the applicant's here, and I believe the neighbors are here as well. Okay. Any questions for Scott at this point? Commissioner Barth? Scott, uh, looking at the map you've got up, um, is that drainage way uh, <coughs> one of the blue lines that we discussed? Is that why it's blue? Or no, it's not an intermittent. It's it, not a blue line. It's not a blue line. It just shows the, the drainage okay. channel, and it, 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 it came up on our, on our GIS mapping that way. But it there, came it, up on the GIS, but doesn't that indicate that it was one of those, quote, unquote, blue lines? An intermittent stream? Uh, it, it, sh it shows that there's, there's an intermittent waterway there, but okay. we don't identify them as blue, as blue lines with our GIS, and, and we, didn't, we didn't adopt that. We did not adopt that. That's correct. So, but it is. It does show that there is a, a waterway, a, a, a drainage waterway there. Okay. Any other questions for Scott? Commissioner? Well, Scott, I'm trying to get the location because we own property right out by there, uh, <laughs> and maybe they can tell. Um, where's where is the towers? Are they on the right side of of uh, 
on the on the east side of 461? I'm not sure which towers. Cell towers? No, there's a. We have property on 266. And I just want to make sure this isn't abutting our property because if there is, I cannot be a part of this discussion. So, uh, I don't. I don't. You'd have to ask the state's attorney, but you're not. You're not a downstream property owner. I, no, I, I realize yeah. that. But my, my, if I'm next door to them, that's a problem. Isn't it? This is two that, this that, is 265. Yeah, that's in your judgment. Can you tell us what that cross street is up there in the corner? This is 265 right here. I mean, and this is sorry, this vertically. Would be, this would be 461st right here, 461st. This would be 460. 460th. Okay, does that give you a better idea? And then Wall Lake is about 462nd? That's correct. I'm going to step down. All right, any other questions for Scott? This is a public hearing, so we would hear from the proponent if you have anything to say. So that would be uh, Tom Op Opitz, if you have anything to, you'd like to say regarding this. <laughs> if you just identify yourself and give your address. Yes, uh, Tom Opitz. Can you want my address? And your address, yep. Uh, 46034 265th Street, okay. Hartford. And do you have anything you want to add to what Scott has said about your drainage? Well, the only thing I'm... <clears throat> would say is that's the, the flow of the water. That's just the way it goes anyway. We're not changing anything. We're not doing anything different. Do you have much runoff? Is it just mostly when it's a rain? That just a hard run? rain, then it then it goes, you know, that's why all the other ditches were in there. Gets rid of the heavy, you know, heavy water. And then this is just to get rid of all the soggy stuff. It's all farmable land. It's just hard to farm when it's wet. Yeah. And that's Has all. there been any ditch clean out in that area at all? Yes. Okay. It's all been done in the last two or three years. Okay. Any other questions? Jeff? The upstream property from you, uh, is that just to the uh, west there then? I mean, the are they flowing down onto you from, from the west? Is that? From the west, yeah, a little bit, yep. Any yep, other? that's just the way the water runs. Any other questions for Tom? Okay. Do you have anything else? Not at this time. Thank you. Um, the opponents, if you would like to speak. Good morning. My name's John Bowl, and I own a quarter east of where he wants the tile. Okay. And you can see on my quarter how it's always wet. Well, he sent so much more water on me. Well, my quarter then is going to be that much worse. Have you? Go ahead. Before Tom come along and bought that property, we used to farm it. Some of these spots, he's did, got the ditches out. He never he drained the farming through when we used to farm it. Mm -hmm. And I farm, currently farm a small square piece that is right, this small square piece oh, right okay. here. Mm -hmm. From right here is where the water spot originally starts, and it just kind of, you know, the more water there is, the farther it peaks up into here and same with this one, you know, the wetter, whoops. That's okay, Scott, I'll be there, you go. The wetter the year is from the water in here, it just, you know, backs up all the way up into this piece that I still currently farm. And that right in there. And that's right in here. It's was kind of a slough, and now he wants to drain it. Can you identify yourself and your address, please, sorry? My name is Jason Bull, I'm John's son. <clears throat> Commissioner Barth. Mr. John Ball, um, so have you considered the idea of putting tile in on your property? Oh, yeah, but you've got to afford to pay, pay for it. So that's why I haven't done nothing. And, I mean, a good neighbor would come over and talk to me, and we would have maybe agreed on something like, you know, okay, let's get together and put in a tile, and you pay for part of it because you're wanting to dump your water on me. But no. He's not a good neighbor, didn't even come over and speak to me. Has there been any drainage uh, on your property, Mr. Bull? Have you cleaned out the ditches at all on your property? No, I haven't. Okay. They were just the ditches of the gentleman that owned the property before us said made. Yeah. Okay. Are there any more questions for Mr. Bull? Okay. Um, anything else you want to say? I'm just saying, 
if he would have come over and talked to me, maybe we could have got to an agreement, you know, you pay for part of the tile and I can pay for it and we'll keep that water moving instead of it all just going to set there now on my ground and I won't be able to farm it. Okay. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm trying sure. to have another question for Scott, I guess. Okay, Scott. Scott, um, you know, looking at this project, uh, if there is a wetland there, it must have been uh, approved by the NRCS, right? Yes, uh, I can. I think I have that in front of me. What? Let's see if I have that map. That's a, I believe it's a, it's approximately 2.9 acres and it was a previously converted wetland. So that is a wetland? It, uh, if it's been previously drained and messed with, then it's no longer counts towards, uh, uh, towards holding up a project. Uh, okay. If it's been disturbed. Uh, and so that's what, am, am I right there, Scott? That's, that's correct. Yeah, if it's been disturbed by men's actions previously, it, it no longer falls into that natural okay. category. Okay. Any other questions for Scott? Uh, Tom, do you have any additional comments? Tom Hopitz. Um, when I first applied for this, I went to Scott and we sent our downstream deals. The bulls went in and uh, talked to Scott. They said they were going to come to me. My proposal when I talked to Scott was we would tile up into theirs a little bit, you know, to help their two wet spots mm -hmm. even more to make all this water flow. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever came to me and talked to me, so okay. that's where we're at too. But I'm just a small farmer. I only farm 150 acres, so we have to, up, you know, do the best we can with what we got. So we're trying to improve our land. And... Um, I don't want to hurt any downstream people. That's not what I'm about. Um, but we have to clean ditches out. If you want the water to keep flowing, you got to do maintenance too. And like Jason said, when they farm that piece of land, they never farm these spots. Well, they never clean the ditches out. Clean the ditches out, the water will flow. And uh, as Scott said, the water all flows to the east. And that's the direction. Uh, went to the NRCS. Everything's approved there. Don't know what else. Thank you. Mr. Sure, Opitz, um, you yes. know, a lot of times it is tough to uh, talk to people about these things. And, you know, one side goes to the planning department, the other side goes to the planning department. Do you think there's any opportunity here that uh, in, in discussing it with your neighbors that, that you could come out with a, uh, you know, amicable uh, solution that would, you know, take care of some of their concerns and, uh, and, and you know, would, would there be any benefit to say waiting a week on this to uh, to let some communication go on? And I'll ask the bulls the same question. Um, would you be open to talking to them about the project? Um, yeah, I would be definitely no problem there. Um, I'm willing to like that piece the, to the west. I'm willing to run some tile lines up into there. You know, just I'm not saying the whole thing, but just some additional feet to go up into there. Going downstream. That's bad when you hook together. I don't want to hook together, personally, because you don't know what they can do to the tile later on. They close it, plug it. New owners don't want it, plug it. I, that's where I put my outlet on the where that yellow dot is, because then the water's, I'm outletting the water on my own property. And then it flows where it wants to go, which is east. So that's why you don't want to hook together on something like that, because which that's what I see. Would you be open to working with them as far as to get their ditches cleaned out? Uh, yeah, I can find them a contractor or whatever. There's lots of people that do that. I just wonder if there's still some more conversation to be had on this project. Any other comments? Yeah, I, no, I guess Barbara. I'd ask the same question of the Bowl family. Uh, okay. So thank you. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Fellas, John. could you come back? <clears throat> You know, it's not easy to, uh, once you get crosswise with somebody, it's not easy necessarily to, to make it work out. But I, I wonder if there's not an opportunity to make this a, you know, a win-win, so to speak. Uh, do you think there's a chance that something could work oh, out? Yeah, 
like I said, if he would have come over and talked to me, we probably wouldn't be here today. Madam Chair, I make a motion to defer action for a week to allow for some continued discussion. Do you think a week is enough? Do you think a week is enough? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the rub. I have a court hearing next Thursday, and the week after that I'm in trial. So, and Commissioner Kelly can't, uh, or has recused himself. So that would mean we need three commissioners here. I'll be here next week. Commissioner Bennett, you got a comment? I guess the question for me is, is if we do delay it a week, is that going to affect your uh, planning or process of getting this completed? Yeah, it's already went this long, we can wait. We'll just have to go through the crops when we do it. Did I make a motion yet? Is, was there a second? There was a motion to a motion defer for a week. I need a second. I'll second it reluctantly. I have a motion and a second reluctantly to defer for one week. Tom, did you have one more comment you want to say? You have to come to the podium. Sorry. Sorry. I guess my comment is um, in one week it takes a lot of time to get all this um, from the soil conservation to get all their stuff, you know, their wetlands legal and stuff. This, it just ain't going to happen um, in one week. Just, I think they're backed up, I shouldn't say, but I'd say six months to a year to get all that stuff done. It's been taking a long time to get all my stuff done. Um, if I might, Madam Chair, I know that uh, there are private contractors that can make an assessment on, on the NRCS stuff as well. Uh, Brian Topp now does that, for example, professionally. Right. And at the same time, really, we just want to see if, if we can get you guys to get along about the issue and, and make it... Uh, we, they don't necessarily need to put tile in the same year here, but right. if we could uh, work to to make it more agreeable for everybody, that would be my hope. I have a motion and a second to defer for one week. Are there any other comments? Is there any comments from the proponents or the opponents? Motion on, did you have a comment, Jason? I guess I just have one more. You know, you're saying about we can clean our ditch out. You know, it takes money, too going to cost a lot of money to clean a ditch out that goes all the way from where our property line starts clear down all the way to this stock dam. I mean, you're talking a quarter mile of ditch. It takes a lot of money to clean that ditch out. We only farm 500 acres ourselves, but we just can't afford to clean this ditch out, so we have to deal with it because we can't justify the cost of cleaning this ditch out for what little bit we're going to gain. We have a motion and a second to defer for one week. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion aye. passes three, two, one. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Okay. Item number 12, consider resolutions to compromise various categories of county aid liens in accordance with county policy. All this. Good morning, Commission. Bob Blitz from the Auditor's Office. And uh, this is a annual process that we go through. Uh, the current policy is to cancel the following categories of county aid liens annually. Uh, the first one would be liens of more than $30,000 reduced to $30,000. And that list has been reviewed by Human Services. Second category would be liens on deceased persons reduced to zero. And uh, normally we wait for one year unless we verify that the estate has no assets. And that list has also been reviewed by Human Services. The third category is liens with no activity for 30 years. Those would be reduced to zero. And the fourth category would be liens under $250 uh, with no activity for 10 years and to reduce those to zero. Now, there is a, a fifth uh, category that would be liens identified as uncollectible, and uh, uh, we're not going to ask that you compromise that category at this time. So I would request that you approve the uh, attached resolution so it will cancel the liens that have been identified in the first four categories. Uh, stand by for any questions. Uh, the, <coughs> incidentally, the total today that we're asking to be compromised is six hundred eighty-nine thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars and ninety cents. Are there any questions for Mr. Litz? Mr. Litz, um, yes, sir. <laughs> so, how much do people owe us? Right now, uh, uh, the balance that we have, with you know everything that's gone on since 
long time before you and I got here, as opposed to what's been paid and what's been compromised. Today, that total stands at $62,275,654. Enough to run county government for a very long time. Well, just about get us a year, wouldn't it? Another comment I would make is there was a breakdown of where those liens were at and the lion's share of them. Well, I think about close to 30 million came out of the public defender's office. So it's kind of an in, it was kind of interesting to go through and see where we were where we were giving our money that isn't being repaid in most cases. I would um, if there's no other questions, I would look for a motion for items A through D as one motion. I would make a motion to approve items A through D. Oh. Scarry, anyway. Commissioner. Madam Marcus. Chair, is it not, last year we actually did these individually, just for clarification in the record. Um, I'm thinking that we probably should be consistent and do them each separately. Okay. We, I would look for a motion for the item A, which is liens, for more than $30,000 reduced to $30,000. I have in my motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second on item A. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is liens to decrease persons reduced to zero. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item C is liens with no activities for 30 years reduced to zero. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And item D is liens less than 250 with no activity for 10 years reduced to zero. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion. We didn't get a motion in a second. I'll motion that. Thanks. Oh. Second. I have a motion and a second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And item E, we are not moving on today. So, thank you. Item 13 is a briefing from the auditor regarding procedural changes under consideration for organizing and tabulating absentee ballots. Bob Litz. Good morning again. Bob Litz from the auditor's office on the election side of things today. Uh, uh, as uh, most of you are aware of, uh, you know, when we do our elections, uh, our staff does the best to get those returns out accurately and uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, last year during the general election, uh, I don't think we got out of there till 4 o'clock and uh, I was taken to task uh, uh, for, uh, you know, not being uh, as, as timely as maybe my predecessor had been on a few events. So uh, that said, uh, you know, I look for solutions because I think that, uh, you know, everybody's planning their parties, everybody wants to know what's going on, they want their answers now and they want them accurate. And I think that uh, we owe the public that to some degree uh, uh, to, to make that happen. Uh, and, and to that end, uh, in, in, in the search for answers, uh, uh, the comparable uh, election uh, entity that, uh, that I would look at, of course, is Pennington County because of the population base that they have out there. And uh, Julie Pearson, what she's been doing for a number of years is she takes the absentee ballots and she counts them a day early, uh, or at least she opens them up a day early, and then uh, uh, sometimes she's counted them that day and held, uh, held it on uh, without releasing that information. Other times she's counted those ballots in the morning. And uh, what I wanted to do uh, this year was explore that opportunity. And uh, to that end, I've got, uh, I've got a meeting set up with my staff, uh, four key people that we're going to discuss it this Friday. But I wanted to bring it forward to this commission to uh, get some input from you folks and see what you felt about us, uh, us doing that and looking at that thing. I'm not entirely convinced that we're going to change anything or do this, uh, you know, and, and, and I would also tell you that in the process of doing this, counting these ballots, we're not doing anything that we don't normally do except we're doing it earlier and we're withholding the results until we're supposed to release them at 8 o'clock the following night. Uh, it's a matter of organizing those things. I believe it can be done, uh, but, you know, uh, I, I certainly want to get everybody on. Uh, I'd like to have this commission on board with that, and I certainly got to have everybody on my staff on board with this as well. And so, like I said, to that end, Friday we'll be looking this over, but uh, I'd be open to questions from, uh, from this commission on this idea. Any questions? Commissioner Barth? I just want to comment, Bob, that uh, I think to one point you're wrong. You are as good as your predecessor on this stuff. I have run several times in this county, and the first time I was elected county commissioner, I didn't know I'd won till 7.30 in the morning. And so these Johnny-come-lately candidates that are complaining about the slow count, they haven't been there. And uh, I think with the increase in, 
in uh, absentee ballots that uh, we've been seeing. I think this is a, a good idea. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Any, Commissioner Kelly? Well, if I'm right, this is your call anyway. I appreciate your keeping us up to date on it, but, uh, and I don't have a problem with it, but, but it is the auditor's call as the chief election official. Is that not right? Yes, sir, that's correct. However, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to get to wrestle a match with the commission on it, and I guess I'm looking for, you know, at least uh, some comments from you or observations from you or improvements yeah. that you might have on All that right. idea. Yeah, I got, a, I, got a, I got a call to question, though, STCL 12-19-43. I'm just going to read this sentence. It's right in the middle of the statute. The absentee ballots may be opened, stamped, and placed in the ballot box or processed by an automatic tabulating machine, but under no circumstances shall the ballots be manually counted, nor any vote totals printed or displayed by any tabulating machine prior to closing the polls. So ultimately, you could open them, you can place them in the ballot box, but you can't count them till the polls have closed. That's what that reads. Am I wrong? If, if I can clarify, and, and this is a process that I do know here to the grapevine that is used in other counties, but that is a distinction that we need to be really mindful in, in that uh, statute if, if you go about it that way, because that, there is a distinction between actually counting them and opening them, checking the affidavits, all that stuff. So I'd really call your attention to 12 19 43 and be very mindful of what that allows but what that specifically prohibits too yes and i did provide that statute yeah, that's know. right yeah. so it's like i said uh, commissioners i'm not entirely convinced that we're going to do it I, I tend to look at it favorably but uh, like i say depending on what gets said here today and what happens on our staff meeting friday uh, you know, I'd like to I'd like to look those things over and think about it a little bit. We have time. I think the primary would be a good time to do that because the volume is less. Uh, we'd be able to get our, our strategy down. We'd be able to get our tactics down on exactly on how to do this here. But I think uh, I think dividing those uh, precincts up into the machines and trying to figure out some balance about how many ballots are going to come in, how many voters uh, are out in a precinct, and what the voter turnout is, so we can kind of balance between the four machines and have those. Uh, ballots, you know, not we, we, we want the precincts on the absentee ballots to be the same precincts as the regular ballots that come in. And so we got a little bit of figuring out to do, but it's nothing that's uh, that's impossible. It's just uh, it's just more work. Okay, Commissioner Benegal. Well, obviously, if it's time saving, which it, it will be to open the ballots, uh, people would I'm assuming would rather work at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon than four o'clock in the morning to do that. So um, I don't have a problem with it. And I think it's just your judgment on how you handle that process is fine. If it's being done in other counties and we can save some time and effort, uh, it also potentially improves some accuracy on the other end. And it's legal. Yes. Appreciate you bringing it forward to us and at least letting us know what you're considering and just we'll look forward to your final decision before the election. Very good. And I would also add that I think there's been a consensus in my staff they'd like to get out of there before four yeah. Any other questions or comments? Thank, Thank you. you, Bob. Item 14 is Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Are there any liaison reports? We have two here. Commissioner Barthes. All right. Uh, well, I just want to report that in the um, Homeless Advisory Board we had a presentation by a company called uh, Redemption Technology. And this is a privately uh, owned uh, operation that's going to start business right over by Handyman and their hope is to train people uh, uh, to get jobs and to hold jobs. Uh, they're going to uh, not try to just find them a job flipping burgers where they're going to leave that job uh, in six weeks. They're hoping to find jobs for homeless people uh, where they will stay for some period of time and find a life. And uh, They haven't started operation yet, but it's, it's right near where the Catholics are building their new uh, facility. It's uh, kind of on the corner of the handyman parking lot, just north of the uh, Labor Department, just south of uh, Phil's Pub, for those of us that have been around the block. Uh, anyway, uh, that uh, it's a very positive development that private individuals are looking at doing what's difficult for us in government and a little easier for them. Commissioner Benega. 
Well, I think it was last week, uh, Commissioner Heiberger and I had a public defender's uh, advisory board meeting, and, or comp and um, we have one individual who has resigned as an advisory board member, and we will probably have at least two, maybe three applicants for that position that we'll bring to you in the near future. But more importantly, um, as I stated in Tracy's annual review, if you will, and, and budget um, of her department, is that uh, she's worked hard with Sumption and Wyland as a trainer, if you will, in doing some uh, not only staff training, but she's also done some personnel management and accountability uh, training with that group, met with uh, staff, and uh, frankly has responded to the uh, questions that all of us had asked in previous presentations that she had made about, uh, I would call them non-billable uh, hours, and much to my surprise, and I think you'd also, Commissioner Heiberger would say the same thing, there's many times that she has no control over those non-billable hours by the judicial system uh, basically taking and uh, exempting individuals for paying those bills and, and they're not getting paid or recorded and she's done a very good job of accounting for that kind of transaction so I think over the next uh, few months you'll continue to see improvements in the management recording system that uh, was instituted maybe a year ago not quite that long ago but uh, also with the fact that she has uh, taken the initiative to follow up with the training that's been provided and the budget that's been put together for her to, uh, um, frankly, be uh, tutored in some of the re responsibilities of that, that function. So I personally think that we need to pay more attention uh, in the budgeting process to the whole training uh, line item because uh, you know, you can't lead a horse to water and make them drink if they don't understand the, what we're asking for. And in some cases, uh, you may take the best lawyer and make them the, the uh, public defender, but that doesn't necessarily always mean that you uh, give them the tools in the toolbox to be able to fix the car. And uh, I think that's going to have to be a conversation that we have in the next... Uh, few months because training eventually comes around to uh, cause issues if you don't have it uh, supported the way it needs to be supported. So that is my opinion at this point. Who started? Is the, uh, it was a citizen appointment that, or the citizen that resigned? Uh, liaison for the commission office, yes. or if you want to call it that. The lay person, correct. Yeah. So it's our call yes. to, to yes. reappoint. But the advisory board, I think, will review the uh, uh, applicants and bring uh, a, a person to us as a recommendation. But I think we should really involve ourselves in this one after, I mean, look at this a little more seriously than we have probably in the past. If you have ideas, send them to us. Yep. <laughs> Madam Chair, yes. I'd just like to mention one other thing that came up during our Homeless Advisory Board. A couple of the non-governmental uh, organizations have been approached by the state regarding uh, Senate Bill 70 with the idea that they would take, say, 9 to 18 uh, parolees under their wing and uh, guide them for a few months. Um, the funding and the contracts haven't quite been worked out, but... Uh, I just thought we'd be interested to hear this. Um, I have a couple of things. Um, last week, or about a week and a half ago, I traveled to New Jersey with the state for the statewide steering committee, the JDAI expansion statewide, and um, to, for training under New Jersey's JDAI site as to how to expand statewide. Um, we did a lot of I guess just listening, collaborating, trying to come up with um, different ideas on how to move forward with the state expansion. At this point, I think it was mostly educational. We'll be getting back together in, um, for conversation in about a week or so um, with the state key people that were there to discuss how we're moving this out statewide. One of the um, important things was to have a statewide assessment tool 
um, that you can, the risk assessment tool that we've talked about lots of times in other commission meetings, and that is already in place in the state. So we're kind of a step ahead of the game already, just having our um, risk assessment tool already in place that's been used in Pennington County and Minnehaha County very successfully. And believe it or not, from two sides of the states, we agreed on one. So um, I think it will be pretty easy to work towards um, moving it out. It's going to look different in every county, uh, every county. Obviously, we have the two most populated counties. Some of these people only have a few people in their JDC. And so it's just a way to do business better and to keep kids in the right place at the right time. So I'll be looking forward to more information coming forward in the future with JDC. Um, the other one is last night I was at a chamber meeting where we have um, Billings, Montana in town learning all about the city of Sioux Falls and Minnehaha County and how we're doing things right. And Mark, I wonder if you would just give me two minutes or a minute and just speak about what's going on. I was there just briefly. It looks like a very exciting meeting. I think they're going to be in town for about 48 hours and be exhausted when they're done. Yes, thank you. Mark Lee with the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, yeah, we were contacted a while back by a gentleman named John Brewer, who is the uh, president of the chamber in Billings. And they arranged what they are titling an aspirational city visit. In other words, they brought 26 people from their business community, from their county government. Uh, they didn't bring many people from their city government because they're kind of in the throes of their city budget process right now, and that's really the only reason to visit Sioux Falls and, frankly, to try and figure out what it is that we've done right over these last years that has propelled Sioux Falls forward in such a wonderful way. So last night they began, and thank you for joining us mm -hmm. uh, last night, Commissioner. It was great. Or yesterday they actually began at the airport. They did a little mini bus tour, um, and then they we joined them at the uh, Hilton Garden Inn uh, for dinner and a reception and a presentation. And then today... Uh, they began with, um, an, a, they're going on a very long, detailed set of bus tours today. They're looking at a variety of different things in our community. Uh, they're going to tour the new events center uh, at noon today. Um, and then they will continue on and, and end up at the zoo this evening. And they will tour that and look that over. And then tomorrow they have some more things at the chamber office. And then they depart. So. If you can think about the logistics and the commitment of getting 26 business leaders together to leave at 3.30 in the morning from Billings to get to Sioux Falls and spend all day Monday working on this, all day Tuesday working on this, half day Wednesday, and then of course travel back. They are very interested in what's going on in Sioux Falls because they see it as things that they want to learn from and, and to the best of their ability emulate. So. Great. It's quite a nice uh, affirmation that even though we deal with some sticky problems in our community, things, things are going well, and this is an affirmation from one community that they view that things are going very well, too. It says a lot about Sioux Falls. Yes, it does. Some and, of the conversation yeah. that went on the brief period of time that I was there was about taxes. Um, I did talk to their county commissioner. They had one present afterwards, and he said that they also run their county strictly off of property taxes, the same as we do. They must have a much higher levy because for the same amount of Basically, their population, their county is the same as ours, but their budget was over uh, for their county over a hundred million. I said, "Well, we're at about 65 million." Um, I would have liked to have more conversation with them, but their tax structure is different in their city, so they are not able to collect the two, se two cents si sales tax well, that the city. Tax, so um, their their city issues were actually in having more difficulty than their county was. Their city runs off of property taxes too, but they didn't seem to have the revenue that the county had. And he said something about a cap in the city, so I'm not really sure how Yeah, they I'm not exactly sure what their entire structure is either, yeah. but it is markedly different. And yeah. they are challenged in their visitor industry, uh, trying to attract more activity there. They're challenged in their economic development activities in a variety of things. And so they're here trying to learn yeah. as much as they can from uh, the successes we've had over the last 20 years in this community. Maybe they all here. won't go back. <laughs> <laughs> I think they also have a beautiful state. They titled it an aspirational city visit, but they um, referred to it last night as the jealousy city visit. Yeah, they did. So, <laughs> uh, anyway. yeah. And we are not going to allow them to steal Mr. Stan Sanford from the community. They made a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any new business? Oh, well. Commissioner Kelly. You know, Darren in his presentation today talked about a sports district 
and you know my stomach shrunk because I thought, uh oh, this is going to be another tiff. And I think somehow we got to keep an eye on that thing that uh, uh, they don't find reason to develop this all into a tiff. I think the district itself and applying, you know interest there is, is one thing, but if they start looking at our tax and what the development's going to be out there, I think we should be very uh, aware of what's going on. And maybe I'm totally off base, but it just raised the flag. Any other new business? Any old business? Oh, excuse well, me. if I can uh, jump on that bandwagon a little bit. I, I thought the map, or at least the footprint that was presented, was very um, aggressive. And I do find it interesting that when I think of, of the location of where the um, event center is, and I looked at the breadth of the footprint that actually took up uh, m most of northeast Sioux Falls, including the airport, I know that there are some vested interests that are beyond the scope of the city. For example, the airport authority uh, has their own jurisdiction. And I also know that many different businesses relocated into that area because it was an industrial area. And, uh, you know, for example, Bell Box paper is up there, and we have some other interesting industrial-type capacities that were encouraged to move there. And when they get put into a, a footprint like that, um, what's good for what would exist on the northeast corner of this particular area relating to sports may not necessarily fit with what the expectations are for the industrial uh, neighbors down in the south uh, east corner so and of course the airport authority they want to make sure that they have open flight paths and safe ingress and egress into the city so uh, I think it's going to be an interesting cohort that they're putting together Commissioner Kelly one other comment because we're on that um, you know it, I, we could sell our property to the city and get a some sort of a lease back of a dollar a year for four years, we know we're going to get rid of that CCC. And and uh, that would get us out of the program. They could go forward with their development plans. Frankly, I believe that that may be the next the next uh, big place for motels and the hotels in this town is, is in that, that corridor up there because there's a lot of available land. And and with the convention center and the event center, there's, there's some built-in activity that, that's important. But I'd like to see us get out of this thing, let the, you know, let the city do its thing out there, and we'd get our money, and uh, you know, perhaps that money would be enough to finish off the PSB. But I, I think we do need to act somewhere so that they can, they can continue to develop their plans. I can understand why nobody would really want to come in and make a commitment until they found out what was going to happen with that four acres we own. And, and uh, if the city owned it, the ball's in their court. We've got our money, and uh, we've got a time frame to get out of there. And I, I don't think there's any question within four years that building will be gone. Is there any other new business? I think I asked for old business. Do we have any other old business? With that, I would look for a motion to um, adjourn to executive session per, for personnel and contract negotiations. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn for personnel and contract negotiations. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We are adjourned.